<clears throat> Thanks. I am Chuck Joy, and uh, it really is exciting to be part of this conference. As a child psychiatrist and a poet, this is one of the rare and best opportunities of the year where those two streams flow together so effortlessly. So thanks to uh, Safdar and the rest of the organizing staff, Ed, and everybody. I actually consider myself as part of the panel, and I hope my poetry contribution uh, resonates with the topic of diversity. There are so many poems. I have a book. This is, this is my book. It's called Fun Poetry. It's available through lulu.com and other major book-selling websites. And I thought, I wonder if I can go to my book and find some poetry to address diversity. Now, I like spectra, a wide range of different realities from one end to the other. And when I came to this book, Fun Poetry, I, in fact, found that I could, I hope, present and contribute a spectrum related to diversity from specificity to universality in two poems. The first one, only a part of a poem. Now, early, this, this is the part of the spectrum that begins with specificity where diversity represents that we're all different. And my contribution from this book is regarding Italian heritage as a specific contribution to diversity. And I think Mr. Upshur earlier today established that there might be others in the room who bring Italian heritage to the diversity table. Was that correct? He asked for a show of hands. Did, did, was there a show of hands over that one? Well, how about one now? Is there anybody who would like to show their hand bring an Italian heritage to the diversity table? That's great. So in this book, this book actually includes uh, a, a five sections, one of which is called Italian American Poetry. So I'm going to read from that section. Uh, there's a poem in here called Still Together, and it describes a gathering, a very large gathering, an Italian wedding, in fact. It goes on to describe the whole thing. I'm just going to read the introduction as kind of a prologue to represent specificity. Still Together. Italian-American men and women, some simply Italian, only a few other than Italian, their children, grandchildren, running in from their Hummers, Scions, Cadillacs, and caravans, parked in every available space along the narrow streets, the old neighborhood. Dino's Ristorante, one green awning among many, this is Manhattan. Mulberry Street, Dino's, glass front doors, tile floors, two fountains in the lobby, Dino himself mustachioed, fawning, greeting the proud LaRusso, another two bald men standing beside them, poking each other in the chest. The beautiful Cecilia, bored and haughty, staffs the coat check from behind the half door, her chin propped by both palms. Three young men, two of them cousins, standing right there in dark suits, their ties undone, cracking wise about the rangers, entirely aware of her. Thank you. The poem goes on to describe the bar and the, and the band and the dancing and the food, oh, and then, and then the uh, guest of honor. So that was specificity, an example. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, universality. And also, although we're a panel on diversity, the, the uh, uh, conference includes spirituality, and I hope this poem contributes to both. It's called Nameless One. I'm never alone here. Never. No matter the hour, day and night, he is with me. 
nameless one. I am myself. I have many names. Mostly, I call myself Chuck. But the identities seem limitless. Poet, doctor, husband, they pile up, many with their own name. And over time, my parents call me by a different name. Did you know that? And the nicknames. This one guy calls me Chuckster. Another, George. So, <laughs> nameless one. He never changes. He has developed, but he stays the same. I change around him. My moods come and go like the weather, rain, snow, not him. Nameless one. His mood is like the desert. Or better, San Francisco, always 72 degrees with a fresh breeze. It might be me. But that's exactly how I like it. We talk all the time. Do I always listen? No. But I always try, and I often end up wishing I did listen. He is always with me in the low times, between poems or patience or scenes from the drama of my life, the comedy. And high times, his presence sometimes dimmed, shouldered aside by teammates jumping on my back. But in the locker room, after the champagne has dried, there he still is. Nameless one. No number for him either. More reliable than gravity, than air to breathe, his attitude toward me pleasant, friendly, almost tender, always willing to lend an ear. His speech, though clear, indistinct, as if too deep for words, as if even language is too weak, very unique. The closest thing is poetry. But even then, there's me, nameless one. Thank you very much.